Hello world, it's Alex the Dev. I started creating games independently just over two years ago, around January 2019, which is when I created all my social accounts, my Twitter, YouTube, and everything else. Today we are going to look at the games I have created over that time period, which include Egghead, Clucking Around, and Don't Drop Dan. Hopefully you know what those games are and you've played all three of them. If you haven't, then... Do me a favor, please. Get out of here. I'm joking. But we're going to take a look at each game's analytics, how they've performed, we are going to look at how they've been monetized, and then we're going to look at how much money each project has made. Hopefully the numbers will just be interesting to look at and we can learn a thing or two. Uh, once we've finished, I'm going to talk about what the plan is next because I'm thinking about going through the projects and experimenting with a few things. So if you'd like to know about that, stick around till the end. Let's go. But wait, I'm trying to hit 100 subscribers, which seems pretty realistic. So if you are not currently subscribed and want to see more awesome videos like this, hit that subscribe button. Cheers. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is load up the developer consoles for the Google Play Store and the App Store. Just see how the games have performed overall. So this is the Apple developer console. There's lots of cool things going on here. We can ignore this at the top. That's just telling me I have a new agreement to accept. October 2019 is the furthest we can go back for some reason, but these are the lifetime stats for my games. As we can see, Egghead is the game that has performed the best with 31,000 impressions. That's pretty exciting, but that's only how many people have seen the game pop up while browsing the store. That's not necessarily how many people have viewed the store's page. What we should really be looking at is units, which is how many downloads the game has had overall. Egghead is still the top performer there, and it's pretty much a draw between clicking around and Dot Drop Dan. We will leave the sales blurred out for now, but we will be coming back to those very soon. If we click on a project's page, we can actually dig deep into the analytics. We won't do this for every project because we'd be here all day. We might save that for another video. We will look at my top project, Egghead. The reason I actually think it did so well is if we look over here at the impressions, we can see there's a bit of a bump. And that is because impressions steadily increased after release, but then... For some reason, in February 2020, it had a massive bump where it gained over 10,000 impressions in just that month alone. If we scroll down on the main page and look at where most of the downloads came from, we can see over 50% of the downloads came from the App Store browse rather than searching for the game or clicking on a direct link, which suggests to me that at some point in its lifetime, Egghead got promoted on the App Store, which is pretty cool to think about. Okay, now we've taken a quick look at that. Let's see how the game's performed over on the Google Play Store. And this is the homepage. You can see our games here. You can also see the installed audience, which is how many people have the game installed on their phone right now, which is just a pretty cool number to look at. I don't think we can view the lifetime analytics side by side like we can on the App Store. There probably is a way. I just don't know how to do it. So what we will do instead is click on each app individually and take a quick look at the lifetime stats. There's a lot we could look at here, but I'm just going to focus on the downloads. We can then later see how that translates to revenue. If you would like to see a full video of me digging through the analytics, let me know in the comments below and I'll make it happen. All right, let's get through this quickly so we can get to the good stuff. This is Egghead, which achieved 68 downloads or 68 new users, but apparently lost 89 of those. I'm not 100% sure exactly how that works, considering we still have nine active devices, but I'm guessing it achieved around 68 downloads. <laughs> now to switch over to clucking around, we can see, oh, and switch into lifetime stats. Let's not forget about that. We can see that we have acquired 39 new users and lost 54 of those. I'm really not sure how those stats work. We still have two people that have it installed on their phones now. It hasn't performed quite as well as Egghead, but I'm still quite happy with how it performed. But last but certainly not least, let's take a look at Dot Drop Dan, my most recent project. Okay, Dot Drop Dan has acquired 136 users, which is quite interesting. It doesn't actually tell us how many users we have lost. Instead, it shows us our revenue, which... I suppose would be more important, but that would ruin the video, so let's blur it and put a funny number over the top. We have actually acquired a lot of these new users over the recent month, which is interesting. I don't know exactly where they've come from, but that could be due to some of my other videos I've been doing recently. We also have 19 active devices, which is pretty good. That makes Dot Drop Down my most popular game on Android. All right, we've looked at the games I've made. We've seen how well or not so well they did on the stores. Before we get into the good stuff and look at how much income was generated from each project, we need to know how each game has been monetized. We'll start by looking at Egghead. This should be pretty easy. How does this game make money? It doesn't. This was my first game. I made it in a week or two and I made the decision to release it for free. There's nothing to buy, there's no ads, and it's free to download. Was that a mistake? Probably. But I created this game for fun, to build experience, and mostly to figure out publishing, which never gets easier. It does make this video a little easier though. We now know my first game has made a grand total of zero. I will talk about that more towards the end of the video. When we got to clucking around, I made sure not to make the same mistake again. This game is free to download, however, this time I included ads. You can't pay to remove ads though, this is mainly because at the time I had no idea how to do that. Anyways, 
An advertisement pops up once every three levels. That may not seem like a lot, but you'll be surprised how fast you fly through the levels. In a game where you can't remove ads, that's more than enough. Rewarded ads are also available. You can use this to double your points at the end of the level or get an extra life when you die. The ads are provided by Unity Ads, Google AdMob, and AppLovin. We'll take a look at those in a second. Finally, we have Dot Dot Dam, which is probably my most complete project, at least in terms of monetization. In this game, we have ads pop up after every game. We have more appear in between longer game sessions. There's also a rewarded ad you can click once every five minutes that gives you more gold. And finally, we can remove the ads. Yay! Is that enough though? Let's find out. So we are back in the Apple developer console. This time we're going to take a look at sales. Since Don't Drop Down is the only game within that purchase, it makes sense to take a look at this first. So let's click over here and click on lifetime stats. There we go, we can see we've done $1.28 in sales. It says right here that we have sold remove ads, don't drop Dan, once. That's about 99p, which is the price point I set it at on both Android and iOS. If we come over to proceeds, we can see how much I actually get. I get 74 cents. This is because some taxes are taken away and Apple obviously take their cut, which is 30%. Although I have recently been accepted in the small business program, which means Apple will only take 15% from future sales, which is pretty cool. All right, we now know how much money we've made over on iOS. Let's go check out Android. The first thing we are going to do is scroll down here and take a look at revenue. Here we can see how many items I have sold, which countries bought them and when. Let's switch to lifetime stats and take a look. Awesome, we can see there is a couple of sales here. Obviously there's none earlier than this because none of my other games have anything to buy and Don't Drop Dan is still fairly new. If we click on the item, which is remove ads, we can actually get a bit more information. We can see it sold twice, once in the Netherlands and once in Canada. The prices do vary a little bit, but I'm guessing that's due to currency conversion and taxes. One good thing about Google is the payment threshold is actually pretty low and you get paid monthly. So if I click over here on payment settings, I may have to blur a few things on this screen. We can see I actually got paid on the 15th of December 2020 and I received £1.30. After Google take their 30% like any other store. Good news though, not long after Apple started its small business program, Google announced it would be doing basically the same thing, which is a massive win for us indie devs. Victory! Before we summarise what we looked at, let me just do some quick conversions. Please hold. Right, we now know how much my games have made from sales. Dot Dot Dan made £2.12 from Android and at 99p on iOS, which brings the total to £3.11. However, from that, I only received £1.89. That's 54 pence from iOS and £1.35 from Android. Cool. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. With sales covered, that only leaves ad revenue, so let's take a look at that. As I said earlier in the video, this comes from three places, Unity Ads, AdMob, and AppLovin, so let's open up all three and take a look. Starting with Unity Ads, on the homepage, we can see both projects have earned a little bit extra this week, not bad, but let's see how much each project has generated from when they were published. Let's start again with Don't Drop Dan. We click on this and switch to lifetime stats, just like we did before. And there we go, we can see Dot Drop Dan has made around 14 cents, which doesn't sound like a lot, but we have got to consider Dot Drop Dan is my most recent game. It hasn't actually been out that long. It has around 399 impressions and an ECPM of 35 cents. If you don't know already, ECPM is just how much I get paid per thousand impressions. 35 cents is pretty low for that, especially since Unity say the average is between 6 and $12, although that can vary for many reasons. But I'd assume that is again because the game is just hasn't been out long enough and it would need more impressions to get a more accurate ECPM. I should also mention that Unity Ads has a 5,000 impression threshold before you will start to see consistent revenue. Because of this, the revenue numbers I'm showing you here have only just started appearing over the last couple of months, which may be why the numbers are pretty low and inconsistent. All right, we've seen enough of Dot Drop Dan. Let's take a look at Chickens, which is clucking around. This game has been out longer, so we can hopefully expect better results. For example, this week alone, we have only had two impressions, but we have an ECPM of $17. I wouldn't expect that to stick around on the lifetime stats the quality of impressions will differ but that's pretty damn good when i switch over to lifetime stats we can see the ecpm drops to 535 which is a lot more realistic and closer to the average amount this is ideally what we should expect in every project what's interesting to me though is this game only has 71 impressions which is far less than dot drop dan had but it has earned over twice as much with 38 cents now we know how much both my games have made from Unity Ads, let's take a quick look at how and when it pays out. Unity Ads has a threshold of $100 paid monthly if you reach that amount. Until then, your balance is stored here. Everything you earn is added to this balance at the end of each month, which also explains why the available balance is a little lower than the current total. One down, two to go. Now let's take a look at Google AdMob. This is the homepage and straight away things are looking a little better. We can see from only 17 impressions I got around 19 pence. This is from this week alone so that's pretty good. The ECPM is £10.93 which is quite the improvement. Before we look at the games let's quickly take a look at how the payments work. 
Firstly, we can see I've earned around 80 pence. The actual amount may vary. Like Unit Yards, add mob pays monthly. If you reach the payment threshold, we can see mine set to 60 pounds, which works out just a little lower than Unity. If we come over to this screen, we can see how each ad placement has performed. The best ad, earning over half the total amount, is the pop-up ads in clicking around. They earned 51p, followed by the pop-up ads in Dot Drop Down. Rewarded ads do seem to earn more, but they get less impressions overall, making it harder for them to compete. Pause. There's been less impressions overall on AdMob, and this is by choice, yet it's performed better and earned double. You may be wondering why I don't just stick with AdMob. Well, let me tell you why. Long story short, when I first monetized clicking around, I tested all three providers, setting a new one every update. AdMob showed the best results, so I let that display around 80% of my ads. I even got a nice email saying I earned my first dollar. Then about a week later, I got another saying I was banned for 30 days for invalid traffic. I had no idea why, so like any game dev problem, I googled it and found I wasn't alone. Apparently it happens for many reasons, if too many people click on ads or the same person repeated the clicks or there's too much traffic in one location and so on, there's not really too much you can do to prevent it. After this I decided to restore balance and now AdMob only gets around 10% of my ads. Anyway back to the video, enough of that, it's time to take a look at the final ad provider, Applovin. Just like before, we'll be taking a look at the total. Here we can see the analytics for all my games. $1.41 is the total, which is pretty good in comparison. It just about has the same number of impressions as Unity Ads, but has a much lower eCPM than both providers. This can be explained though when we take a look at each project. We can see it's split up into four. We have each game on each platform. Let's take a quick look at each one before we finish up, starting with clicking around on Android. We can see this version didn't do very well at all, which isn't surprising. The Android version of clicking around didn't do too great either. When we switch over to the iOS version, we can see it starts making up for it a little, but the numbers are still pretty low. This could be because in clicking around, AdMob served the majority of the ads. Okay, moving on to Dot Drop Down, the Android version, we can see I have a decent number of impressions, but the income is still pretty low, which means the largest chunk of revenue comes from the iOS version. This version alone earned $1.14, which is the best we've seen so far. The eCPM is back to normal, and surprisingly, the impressions aren't much higher than the other versions. Alright, we have taken a look at everything, we have seen all the numbers, time to do some conversions and add everything up, I'll be right back. Okay, with that done, it's time to take a look at how much I earned over the past two years. We already know Egghead made zero throughout. We know in total I made £3.11 from in-app purchases. Of that, I received £1.89. Unity Ads made 52 cents, which is around 37 pence at the time of converting. AdMob made 88 pence, and Applevin made $1.41, which is roughly one great British pound. That brings our total ad revenue up to £2.25, pence, meaning the total overall is... Short drum roll, please. <laughs> £4.14, pence, roughly $5.86. Not bad for two years' work. Seriously though, all jokes and sarcasm aside, I am happy with that and grateful to anyone that's still playing my games. I've made plenty of games without making money. The fact numbers are showing now, however small, is incredibly motivating. And who knows, in a year or two I could be recording part two of this video from a private island in the sun. I wish. Before this video ends or gets too long, I want to quickly run over the plan from here. This is my not so good illustration and handwriting that explains everything. Step one was this video. Now I need to focus on Jelly Toss, my next game, which would have probably been out by now if I hadn't spent so much time on this. I'm back to game dev, so don't expect another video for a while, at least until this game is finished. After Jelly Toss, of course, I can move on to my next game, but wait. Alongside creating new titles, I want to head back to my old games. It's time to properly monetize, starting with letting people remove ads in clicking around and adding ads and in app purchases to Egghead. The cool part about this is it gives me a chance to add new content and I can experiment with different types of monetization in my old projects in hopes of increasing revenue. Remove ads doesn't have to be the only thing to buy. On top of that, I'd like to increase the exposure of my games, increasing downloads. I could do that by optimizing the game's store pages. I'd like to pay to advertise my games and lots of other crazy stuff just to see if it makes a difference. If it does, or even if it doesn't, I can come back and make a video about it so there's plenty of interesting videos to come. All right, that's about it. Let the games begin. Wait, before you go, if you stayed this long, well done, this has been a pretty boring video where I chucked a lot of boring numbers at you. As a reward, here's two codes to remove ads in Dot Drop Dan. One for Android and one for iOS. If you do manage to claim it, just leave a comment, save other people some time. Thank you, you're welcome, have a good day, peace.